What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be fitting 35s on this here GX470. So let's do it. So this is the setup that I've had on here. It's the setup that came with the GX. It's a set of methods wrapped with 275 70R17 BF Goodrich KO2s. There's nothing wrong with this setup, but I definitely want bigger tires. I want bigger tires to give it a more aggressive stance and a better ride quality off-road. So that's going to require some trimming there, some trimming there, maybe some trimming back there. Uh, we're going to find out. Luckily, I watched Chase Gardner's video, this one, and... Um, yeah, I already know that I'm going to have to do some tubbing, do a body mount chop. I've got some scrap metal, so I'm just going to do a body mount chop and make my own body mount chop plates to put in there and weld in place. But yeah, this is the setup right now. I want to say that these are a zero offset wheel with essentially a 32 inch tall tire. So we're going to go from 32s to a 35. We're going to do that today. And these are the wheels. Relations Race Wheels RR7-H. They are the hybrid. Uh, that's the specs. 17 by 8.5, minus 12 offset. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll actually see that I picked these wheels up locally um, for a pretty good price. I picked them up from a guy that was going to use them on his Tacoma. He decided to sell his Tacoma and get a new Colorado. It's an odd plan in my opinion. Stay with Toyota. But, yeah, they're going to work for me. So, going to go pick up the tires now. Um, I can't fit 35s in this or in that GX. I mean, I could if I took two trips, but these tires are really far away. So, my buddy Ryan's coming over to pick me up. Alright, just picked up the tires. Uh, this one was ran as a spare. As you can tell, I bought some used tires. I actually bought these from Chase with the white GX from earlier. They're a set of used 35s. What's actually good about these is aired up with wheels on. These are actually going to measure out to be more of like a 33 and a half or 34 inch tall tire. More like a 34 inch tall tire. So it's going to be a lot easier to fit these on here as opposed to like some newer or brand new ones. So I'm going to take two of these at a time because I can only fit two of them in the GX with wheels to Firestone and then I'm going to bring them back. And then, uh, yeah, I'll get this thing up in there. Probably mount the rears first, because those ones will just go on no problem. And then the fronts, I'll, uh, I'll have the front end jacked up for quite a bit, cutting out some plastics and hammering and all that. So, yep, be right back. How to fit four 35s and four wheels in your Lexus GX470. Funny part about this is I was going to use the 460 because there's no drawer system in it, but my wife is using it. As I'm finishing loading up the 470, she pulls up. <laughs> Alright, we're loaded. Let's roll. Back from Firestone. Got the wheels and tires mounted up. These are Toyo Open Country MTs. They're mud terrain. load range E, so it is a 10-ply tire. There we go. I'm going to chalk the front wheels, jack up the rear, get the rear wheels and tires mounted, and then we'll jack up the front and start working on the front. Let's go.
All right, so that's a big wheel and tire. Definitely doesn't have as much lift as I thought this GX had. I thought it had like a three inch lift spring on it. Looks more like it has a two or a one and a half inch lift spring on it. So I might have to get some different springs for the rear. Get the other side on and then put it on the ground. So on the ground initial impressions uh it's a lot bigger so these 35s next to these 32s uh, like i said these are worn so they should measure out to be about a 34 it's just overall like they're wider they're taller bigger heavier everything so uh, initial impressions is i'm definitely gonna have to trim back here i've already taken a few inches off of this rear bumper back here but i'm not opposed to taking a cut going this way to get rid of this corner right here uh, and then up front I'm going to definitely have to take some off right here and then do some cutting hammering of that pinch weld right there so I'm gonna get the front wheels and tires on because I know that that's gonna take a lot more cutting and clearancing and then I'll come back and then I'll uh, clearance the rear so yeah so Alright, so just got the front end down on the ground and I can see I'm clearing the upper control arms pretty well. I've got probably about an inch and a half of space there. That's usually a concern with stock control arms, so happy that I did those. From the tire to the plastic here, which is the rear of the driver fender, I probably have an inch and a half of clearance there. So I already know that I'm going to be cutting this, this fender. It's probably going to be following, or in this curve I should say. I'll probably start my own angle to come back this way. So this curve is kind of going to be elongated. It's not going to be so square right there. It's going to stay rounding off. And then I'll pull out this wheel liner. And then I'm going to do some hammering and some cutting. So, shouldn't be too bad. I shouldn't have to cut too, too much to just be able to drive this on the street. But of course, to be able to off-road, go in full lock and go in reverse, just driving it on the street. In a parking lot, I'm gonna have to do a body mount chop, which I'm prepared to do. I have a welder, so I can essentially just mark it here at home, cut it with my cutoff wheel on a grinder, uh, make a template with cardboard, and then actually just weld it up front bumper. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this line, this line all the way across the bumper. So I'm gonna get rid of this bottom overhang and uh, gain some more tire clearance there. I'm also going to kind of do a little bit of a GX Viper cut, if you will. Forerunners, it's real popular to do a Viper cut where you cut from here. To the <laughs> to essentially the middle of the bumper i've done it on a on a fifth gen before uh never again i'm not a huge fan of the way it looks but yeah you can kind of tell just from here maybe it's just because the springs in the front aren't settled but uh yeah the front is definitely taller than the rear so i already hit up a buddy up in phoenix he's got a set of taller coil springs for the rear it's about a two hour drive to get up there so i'm not going to be able to get up there anytime soon but as soon as i can I'm gonna be putting some taller coil springs in the back. Or who knows, maybe I'll go to an airbag setup. What are you guys' thoughts and opinions on that? Taller springs or airbags? Leave it in the comments below. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna start marking and start trimming. There's a solid body line right here to follow. But once it hits the center of the bumper here, the body line kind of 
this up here. So I'm gonna tape it just to kind of reinforce the body line. There's so many good ones. I can take my palm sander and sand up to the white line and then remove the tape. Looks way better, and it's definitely gonna help. Yeah, definitely gonna help with the tire clearance up front. I may still, like I said, need to take this corner off, but my tire will tell me if I do. So I think next what I'm gonna do is pull this wheel liner out, and then unbolt this wheel liner, see if I can flex this out, and then I'll start trimming this. All right, I'm gonna pull out the wheel liner. It's a 10 mil and a T27 Torx bit. If you're unfamiliar with a Torx bit, it is this guy. I'm not reusing these wheel liners, so I'm not gonna try to save this plastic clip. I'm just gonna pull it out just like that. And I'll switch over to the Torx bit. And look on this side. Easy. All right, now I'm gonna trace a line on this fender, right here. And I'll probably start at like this body line just to keep it uniform on the other side. And then down here I'll mark uh, probably about an inch and a half back, maybe about an inch back. And then I'll just try to follow the radius of this, of this curve here. Just try to connect those two lines. All right, starting off with less, because you can always take off more, but you can't add material back on. There's a hole down here that the running boards used to bolt to, 
Um, I'm splitting that hole in half, so I'm about three quarters of an inch thick, almost on the dot, uh, three quarters of an inch thick off of this edge. And this is the reference point that I'm going to refer to, that corner. So I'm going to reference this to this edge up here, this tape line, which would be there. And I'm essentially going to try to naturally follow that curve. So I'm going to do it with tape. If tape normally it lays down straight. It's okay if it ends up being a straight line and I cut it as a straight line because you won't re really, really be able to tell. All right, now I can cut from here down. I'm gonna start up here, that way I can try to keep the blade flat to the fender right here and keep the start of the cut natural. And then I'll just drop the cut wherever it drops and then I'll cut it this way. All the cutting is done it's to a point where i can go ahead and take it for a test drive and i can start seeing some shiny spots once you see shiny then you know where to cut and clearance so let's go test drive it here's a look at the current fleet and the lexus just flexing into the driveway so this is just me pulling it into the driveway um yeah when this axle has moved up in its travel, looks like I'm clearing up here pretty good. Clearing in the back pretty good. All I'll have to worry about is bump stops, so let's see how far I am from the bump stops. Uh, I'm a couple of inches away from the bump stops. So I'm gonna wanna get after I get some taller springs for sure, I'm going to want to get some like Duro bumps, like plus four or five inch bump stops for the rear. This is driver's side at flex. Real impressive, huh? <laughs> and then driver's side at a uh, full droop and turned. Uh, this is full driver. I'm against the body mount there, so I'm going to pull it into the driveway, do one wheel at a time, just pick it up, cut the body mount, cut the inner fender, and then cut this pinch weld, hammer everything in, spray everything black, and then I'll be calling it it for the night. All right, I have cut the body mount. As you can see, this pinch weld here, I have put a bunch of cuts into. That's going to make it easier. For me to hammer it over, I'll then have to seam seal over it and then seal it and paint it. Yeah, I don't have any material to actually uh, plate that and weld it, so I'm just gonna leave it as is for right now, but it's completely okay to leave it. Not forever, but yeah. Next to cut, this inner fender. I'm just gonna follow it right up in here. Just take this metal off. Then do it all to the other side. All right, that's what it all looks like. I cut this, hammered it flat, hammered all of this flat, and that's just raw metal. So while I have a bunch of raw metal here, I'm gonna cover it in black paint until I seam seal it and until I do the body mount chop. This uh, monsoon's just rolling in and I wanna get this sealed. Oh, this is 
Krylon Fusion, all-in-one paint and primer, matte black. This wheel and tire is ready to go back on. I'll throw it on and then just do the other side and I'll be done. All right, both sides of the GX are done. So I'm going to call it for the night. I took it around the block and it's driving around just fine at full articulation, still rubbing a little bit. So instead of the body mount chop being about a three inch cut, I'm gonna actually extend it to be about a five inch cut. That way I don't have to do the body mount relocation kit where you actually cut off the entire body mount and relocate it way further back, but yeah. Anyways, that's gonna do it for today, you guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more content, and uh, join the ride, let's see where it takes us. Later, guys.